All right, let's get started. Let's get warmed up. What is gender? Welcome to Gender Odyssey. And this is the first workshop of the first day of a five-day conference, so it's a very appropriate question. And I want you to ask this question throughout the entire workshop. What is gender? And if at the end of five days you're more confused than how, what you started, we did a good job. <laughs> so if you're asking what is gender, it begs the question, what is male and what is female? Let's explore some of the components that make up gender. There are some physical aspects like chromosomes and hormones and voice and hair and height. And there's also social aspects like clothing and name, mannerisms, sexual orientation, sometimes. Can I question? Yes. Um, and lastly, there's uh, legal aspects to gender, which apply to a wide variety of aspects in our everyday life, like marriage and death and athletics and the library card and the gym membership um, and your social security and your insurance. And I bet that we could fill this whole slide with that. So all three put together, we have physical, social, and legal. And you kind of get an idea of what makes up gender, but how do we know what it really is? So how do you know your gender? And I'm genuinely asking this question. I want you to think about it. And what was the moment when you first knew what your gender was? Can anyone recall that? Can anyone explain? How did you know you were a boy or a girl? When someone policed me for being in the wrong restroom. <laughs> when someone told you you were in the wrong restroom. So it took someone else to tell you. I want you to, to, to just keep that question in the back of your mind. Because usually it's, it's something indescribable. And it's something only you know about yourself. And yet we have you know, a whole conference devoted to it. And yet we can't explain it. All right, what is transgender? That's kind of our main topic. And uh, these are side-by-side -side pictures of my California driver's license, taken about two years apart. And in one of them, I'm legally male, and in one of them, I'm legally female. And I want you to tell me which one's which. Right, that's my point. <laughs> OK, here's an official definition for transgender. Transgender is an umbrella term for anyone whose gender identity, gender expression, or behavior does not conform to that typically associated with the sex to which they were assigned at birth. And it's from the APA for all the psychologists. And just to be on the same page, here are a few more definitions. Um, I'm assuming most of you are familiar with, with this content. All right, I see a lot of heads nodding. That's good. So we have cisgender identifies with the gender assigned at birth. Transgender does not identify with the gender assigned at birth. We have trans woman and trans man. And we've defined it, but what does this look like? What does a transgender person look like? All right, here's Ryan Salins, who is uh, an advocate and an author and a public speaker, and he's usually here at the conference, and he's a trans man. This is Jenna Talakova, Canadian Miss Universe contest. This is Kyle Lums. He came out while playing Division I college basketball, and he's an advocate for athletics, and especially trans people in athletics. I really hope you know who this is. <laughs> Needs no introduction. Um, this is Balian Buschbaum, a German Olympic pole vaulter. Yeah, some, some new faces, right? Trans people are everywhere, even in Germany. <laughs> we have a Dutch guy here. Uh, Janet Mock, also famous journalist. And uh, what all of these folks have in common is they're trans men and trans women. And granted, they're much more glamorous than the usual schlumps that we are. Uh, but they're all transgender. So let's go back to the definition for a little bit. And Note that it's very broad. It's purposefully broad because our understanding of the trans experience has expanded. 
it does not say that you have to identify with the opposite sex. I'm always going to air quote opposite. It doesn't say that there are, you know, checklists or requirements for what parts you have to be uncomfortable with. It just says anyone who does not conform to the sex they were assigned at birth in expression, behavior, or identity. So this brings us to non-binary. What is it? It's in the title of the workshop, so we should define it. Here's a non-official definition of non-binary. Anyone whose gender identity is outside of male or female. And this did not come from the APA. But what does that mean exactly? The non-binary umbrella includes uh, a lot of people, and usually it's people who are uncomfortable with the sex they were assigned at birth, and uncomfortable with the opposite one, too. So it's impossible to choose between man or woman, because neither of them fits the person entirely. And non-binary genders are actually pretty diverse. Um, it encompasses many identities and expressions. Some people feel outside of male or female, or in between male or female, or adjacent to, or far away, or next to, or kind of close by but not really. So there's a lot of genders within the non-binary umbrella. There are a lot of genders within the non-binary umbrella. And our language is imperfect because even words like male and female are very limited in encompassing the full variety of non-binary identities. And that's why our language continues to evolve so fast because a lot of the times we're just making it up, literally. Here are some of the labels that people use to describe what their gender is, and a lot more. And that was just for the gender identity part. And there's a lot more for biological sex, sexual orientation, romantic orientation, sexuality, presentation, expression. And I encourage you to go there and, and see for yourself just how many words we have to describe gender. So a label is just a placeholder for gender. And I asked you how you know your gender, and very few were able to tell me. So now I want you to describe your gender. Can anyone describe their gender? Just what words do you use for other people to understand? Femme. Femme. Anything. There's no wrong answer. I mean, you saw how many options we have. I identify through clothing. Depends on who's asking. Depends on who's asking. You're getting ahead of the slides here. <laughs> all right. Oh, I know. It's very early. I asked this question to all of my blog followers, um, and here's what they came up with. Neutral, agender, non-binary boy, transmasculine, not a dude, male, gender fluid, androgynous, gender queer girl, a kaleidoscope, feminine trans guy, gender punk, limitless, maverick, Kind of like a beaten sneaker. Green, yellow for other, and blue for male mixed together. With a meh sound and a wavy hand gesture. If a color spectrum, gray. Boy, if I can get away with it. Non-binary. Masculine neutral. It's an adjective for my gender, not its name. Online, gender queer or a gender. In real life, trans man. Uh, Non-binary, demap, non-fed, spectrum, linear. Okay. Can't describe what I don't have. Gender queer, though I'm not sure if that's totally correct. 404. <laughs> as rarely as possible. Downright confusing. Depends on the day. 
and I just don't have a gender. A lot of descriptions for a very simple question that usually people answer in a very straightforward manner. So as we saw, gender identities are as varied as people. You can't tell someone's gender just by looking at them because identity is internal. To know someone's identity, you have to ask. And even then, the answer you will get is very limited. And there's no go-to pattern for who is non-binary. Our identities are all individually constructed, abstract, complex, hard to explain. Our gender is deconstructed from the ideas we have of gender that most people take for granted. And that's why it's very difficult to figure out and it's very difficult to put our experience into words that other people can understand. So we've seen what transgender people look like. What do non-binary people look like? And I want to say that non-binary people are transgender if they identify as such, but when I say usually transgender, I mean binary identifying trans people, like trans men or trans women, just to make it easier to talk. So let's find out what they look like. This is a photography project by Chloe Aftel that I'm featuring. Um, I was in it, that's why I'm featuring it. <laughs> and uh, she, took, she took my photo and the photos of other people uh, who identify anywhere on the non-binary spectrum. And it's been an ongoing photography project for two years and it's evolving. And the photographer, Chloe, is also learning a lot. And it's been featured in a bunch of online publications it's been gaining steam, and some of the featuring has been not so great. The media is starting to get it a little bit better sometimes. Um, Chloe is based out of San Francisco and LA, but she travels all over the country to take pictures, and she's trying to increase and show all of the diversity within the community, because when it started out, it was just young people, and now she's showing anybody and she's doing a couples one too. So what is gender? We're back to the beginning with no real answers. It's not pink, it's not blue, it's not male or female. And you can appreciate why it's so complicated. 